going to talk today about a couple of COVID related topics. I know that, uh, you know, it's like it's uh, it has become so politicized, but the facts are the facts on some of these things and the facts need to be made uh, available. I've gotten a lot of questions about does a ketogenic diet uh, prevent COVID-19 when you get the infection, you know, the serious uh, outcomes. There's a lot of uh, evidence around that. Um, excuse me, let me re rephrase that. There is not a ton of evidence around it. There's uh, some significant logic. There's significant um, um, stories around it. The bottom line is we'll cover some of that. Uh, we look at different ways of, of controlling this virus and uh, you have debates over masks, you have debates over travel, you have debates over uh, vaccine and debates over things like ketogenic diet. I will tell you though, um, I, I don't think there's much debate that, that keeping your blood sugar low, managing your uh, problems with blood sugar is a really, really big deal. Uh, we're going to do a, a quick one slide discussion of um, some information that was presented at the Endocrine Society just a couple of weeks ago. Basically, it showed that even if you had diabetes, people that had uh, high glucose values at the time of um, admission were much more likely to be intubated, to go into the ICU, and to die. So, uh, it, it brings back the point that we talk about time and time and time again. You know, in terms of our body, our genetics, our age, uh, we have a hand that's dealt with this. But uh, just because we may have full-blown diabetes, for example, meet the, the criteria for full-blown diabetes, most of my full-blown diabetic patients keep, keep their blood sugars below 120 just on a regular basis. And that's with nothing more than metformin. It's not that metformin is a big deal. It's that lifestyle is a big deal. If you don't eat carbs, you're not likely to get significant increases in your blood glucose. Now, back to the original, uh, the bigger topic for today. Uh, I've seen some things that uh, uh, admittedly caused me concern. Um, we've covered uh, a lot uh, from one of my favorite uh, Internet docs, uh, Dr. Baez, uh, I noticed early on in, in the uh, COVID outbreak, she presented from, uh, from Hawaii. And I remember her saying, well, we're, my family's okay. We're protected from um, COVID by, uh, by keto diet. Again, I think there's, uh, there's clearly evidence indicating that that's the case. And both of the topics that we cover today will, will indicate that. But I don't think that's the uh, clearly the most effective way of stopping the, the transmission uh, of this virus. Uh, tragically, um, Dr. Baez's mom died, I believe, uh, just a few months after that well, with and due to COVID. So uh, she was a woman of faith. She um, uh, focused on doing some uh some volunteer work. Again, I'm getting to the edge of what I know about the story, but <clears throat> it's less an issue of a story and how each of us reacts to this. And at least on this channel and more of an issue of what are the facts? What are, what's the biology that uh, can help uh, each of us make our own decisions on what to do? Uh, previous topics that we've covered, uh, LDL. How important is LDL compared to something like the triglyceride over HDL ratio? which is more of a focus on uh, our blood sugar values. And the answer is not very. Triglyceride over HDL is a much more important topic. Uh, vitamin K2 and cardiovascular health is um, always a big deal. There's a lot of interest in that. Prevention of stroke with exercise uh, and other items. A uh, quick commercial for our content. Um, you can access information regarding, you know, there's, there's clear information. I, if, you, um, if you go into our, our comments on a daily basis, I was just covering some of them today and a viewer was saying, my doc 
uh, says that OGTT is only for pregnant women. And it's like, mm, I know that most docs think that. That's why 90% of people with prediabetes and full-blown diabetes don't know they have it. They're continuing to burn their arteries. They're continue to, continuing to set themselves up at major risk for death from all kinds of diseases, COVID-19 only being one of them. I mean, right now, this pandemic, the death associated is really, to me, more of a continued problem with the pandemic of uh, di unrecognized diabetes and uh, hyperglycemia. It's also very clear that your typical doctor does not understand this, does not understand the depth and breadth of diabetes and prediabetes in the population, how to diagnose it and what to do about it. That's not me criticizing other docs. That's just the unfortunate uh, evidence, the science that's out there. Now, <clears throat> everybody cannot and should not uh, leave their doc, but what you can do is take responsibility for your own health in terms of some key areas which doctors just don't tend to understand yet. And that is insulin resistance, plaque, the best way to evaluate plaque. And it's not Framingham to a stress test to, uh, to going to the, uh, the cath lab and a stent. There's better ways of managing it. Um, <clears throat> again, that kind of information is available. You can learn more than most doctors know in just an hour or two about this very, very important, the most important thing to uh, health uh, and avoiding disability and death. Other ways to do that, again, just a couple of hours and anywhere from 19 to 39 bucks. And in many cases, we've given, the, given these away. Just our core courses on plaque recognition and evaluation, cardiovascular inflammation and its biggest cause, insulin resistance. Uh, if you're if you're looking for a bigger bite at the apple and want to hear all of our our core content, there's about uh, 12 hours worth of content on the the heart attack and stroke prevention conference. Um, the subscription plans have been a big deal for a lot of folks. Again, other ways of accessing our content. Todd made a lot of progress on the book, and we hopefully maybe this time we're rounding the the corner towards the finish line. He, we had not had a significant chapter on CIMT and that's uh, Todd's area. He cleaned that up. We've got that now and uh, we're looking to get that out. I am no longer making any prognostications on when that, uh, when that book is available, but we will let you know as it's getting closer. Um, <clears throat> uh, many of you have already seen the, the changes we've made on our site. Um, we also have uh, podcasts now for those of you who like to just uh, plug things into your ears when you go for a run or a drive. Now, let's go to that one slide on a very, very important topic. And it's, again, <clears throat> underlying, underlining that uh, comment that I keep saying that this is the pandemic is not so much a COVID pandemic. It's yet another tripwire into the pandemic of unrecognized diabetes and prediabetes. If you look at the, you go to the Endocrine Society Conference for 2021, again, just a couple of weeks ago, they covered the experience of a New York City dedicated COVID-19 hospital center. They looked at 708 uh, consecutive admissions. They were mostly black, for those of who had glucose over 140, they, their risks were greater, whether they had a history of diabetes or not. Again, uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but if their blood sugar was over 140 at the time of admission, they were more than twice as likely to be intubated. They were more than twice as likely to have to go into the ICU, and they were more than uh, twice as likely to have kidney injury. If their glucose value was over 180 at the time of admission, they were four times more likely to die. Again, 2.7 times more likely to be intubated and 2.9 times more likely to, uh, to end up in the ICU. Again, this is whether or not 
there was a diagnosis of diabetes. Now, there are a couple of issues. You know, what, what's causing this? Uh, we can all only guess. One of the guesses would be, well, you know, we keep saying, and we know 90% of people that actually have this problem don't know it. Well, that's true. There's also a chicken or egg issue. You know, what does that mean? Well, which came first, the, the high blood sugar or the disease? You know, when you start getting uh, serious levels of disease, that trips off uh, the, the hormones that increase blood sugar, cortisol specifically. Um, so what's going on here? Is it people that uh, don't know about their blood sugar and their blood sugar is high and they don't know it and they're at greater risk? Or is it the people that, that have more serious uh, infection they're tripping off their cortisol and causing increased uh, glucose. The reality is we don't know that right now. Bottom line, uh, manage your blood sugar. So the uh, key topic for today is that one about ketogenic diet. Will it prevent COVID-19 impact? And as we already saw from our, our previous example, it's only going to go, it, it probably does, it's not, it's only going to go so far. So this is a, a um, coverage of an article, uh, Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism, Switching Host Metabolism as an Approach to Dampening the SARS-CoV-2 Infection. It's a review article. It's, but it talks about the physiological basis of fat-dependent ketogenic state, its effect on the immune system, and its potential to affect the, uh, the COVID, SARS-CoV-2 infection. No data are available describing the host lipid metabolism effects but of the infection, but it's known that lipids play essential roles as mediators of fusion of the viral envelopes and the glycerophospholipids, pardon that uh, overly geeky term. The, the fats, the, when we're talking about lipids, by the way, we're referring back to fats and oils. So the fats, fatty acids, uh, they are significantly involved uh, elevate, elevated and core parts of coronavirus, uh, coronavirus infected, uh, cells. Uncontrolled viral replication in the lung, uh, triggers release of pro of inflammatory cytokines. Again, basically it's increasing inflammation. We talk about inflammation a lot in this, uh, in this channel. It's really a bigger cause of heart attacks and strokes than LDL, as we've covered many times. And the major cause of inflammation is uh, cardiovascular inflammation is uh, high blood sugars, which we've talked about. Now, this is a slightly different issue. Uh, coronavirus uh, infection causes inflammation as well. This inflammation, like uh, cardiovascular inflammation, starts creating cytokines. Again, some technical terms real quick. I'll cover them. They're not, it's not critical to know the, the terms. Cyto meaning cell, kinds meaning attractants. In other words, um, coronavirus infection, especially in the lung, cause, lung tissue, causes uh, release of chemicals which pull Inflam inflammatory cells to the lung and the inflammatory cells release more cytokines, which bring more inflammatory cells, which release more cytokines. Now, what are the cytokines specifically? Well, again, we'll give, we'll give you some geeky names, IL-1 beta, IL-6, IL-8, TNF alpha. Those of you who remember may be recognizing some of these because some of these cytokines are the very same ones that you see with cardiovascular inflammation. IL-6 was released from macrophages. That's one of the types of inflammatory cells um, and dendritic cells, which are infected with SARS-CoV-2. That contributes to the cytokine storm. Again, hopefully connecting a dot. Many of us who haven't gotten that deep in terms of knowing what cytokines are, or what inflammation is, and certainly what those names are. Many of us have still heard that term, cytokine storm. So that's what's going on. You get this vicious spiral of more inflammatory cells releasing more cytokines, 
pulling in more inflammatory cells, which release more cytokines. Infiltration of neutrophils. Neutrophils are another uh, in immune cell or inflammatory cell, just like macrophages. Macrophages are one type, neutrophils are another type. Lymphocytes are another type that you'll hear. So uh, infiltration, neutrophils, one of these families of immune cells, gets into the airway tissue. It reports, it's reported to create severe stages of the disease. They attack infected cells. They contribute to larger destruction of the lung tissue, including what's called ARDS. And ARDS is, you know, that's when you end up in respiratory distress and ICU and need uh, intubation. So effects of a ketogenic state. Fasting state causes an increase in keto ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate. Um, it increases mitochondrial stress resistance, increases antioxidant defenses, increases autophagy, uh, increases DNA repair, decreases insulin secretion, decreases mTOR, mammalian target of rap rapamycin, and decreases protein synthesis. Again, you're hearing and seeing the same uh, song, maybe a different verse from all of these items. We've covered these types of things before, specific to cardiovascular inflammation. Now we're talking about uh, what uh, a ketotic or ketone uh, burning, fat burning uh, metabolism does uh, for just our metabolism. So medium chain saturated uh, fatty acids, such as lauric acid, medium chains, I believe, are the ones that you find in coconut oil. Long chains, uh, such as oleic acid, which oleic acid is a major, if not the major component of olive oil. These are highly active against enveloped viruses. In arena virus, that's another family of viruses, uh, lauric acid inhibits viral replication. Lauric acid and monolaurin, which is a metabolite from coconut oil, reduce infectivity of RNA and DNA envelopes. They disintegrate the viral envelope. Uh, envelope. Easy for me to say, huh? Prevent uh, binding of viral proteins to, uh, to host membranes. So here's some effects of the ketogenic state. Medium chain, MCFAs, medium chain fatty acids, in including caprylic, capric acid, lauric acid, they su suppress uh, IL-8. You remember IL-8 was one of those um, uh, biomarkers, one of those uh, cytokines that pulls in more inflammation. So some of these medium chain fatty acids decrease that. IF, um, intermittent fasting, reduces IL-1 beta, IL-6, and IL-8. We had another commenter today, pardon me for going off script, but we had, had another commenter today saying, oh no, I don't agree, Dr. Brewer. Um, intermittent fasting has been shown to decrease muscle mass. Well, there's no question that decreased muscle mass is a big, big issue, especially as we get past age 65. But I'm challenging the citation regarding decreasing muscle mass. Um, anyway, back to the script. By, regu by regulating IL-8, the cytokine that we mentioned before with the medium chain uh, fatty acids, neutrophil or immune cell infiltration might be limited and protect lung tissue from exag exaggerated immune response. <clears throat> LA, uh, lauric acid, downregulates IL-6, you know, another one of these uh, uh, fatty acids also decreasing another one of these cytokine, cy cytokines. It contributes to decreased risk of the cytokine storm. So changing the microenvironment of the host or the human metabolism, uh, hopefully will decrease the, uh, the setup, the environment for increased cytokine storm in our bodies. That's what that's all about. So you start saying, well, what do you do about that? Well, again, uh, <laughs> fools rush in for where, where uh, angels fear to tread. And there's a major debate around uh, diet and what's the most healthy diet. But I continue to make the statement, look, especially if you're unable to keep your blood sugars down when you're eating carbs, don't eat them. 
And for many people, that turns into a ketogenic diet. Now, when you term when you when you say ketogenic diet, a lot of people think eating nothing but bacon and steak all day. That's really more of what, what's called a a carnivore diet. Uh, that sounds scary to a lot of people, especially most of us that grew up hearing about a plant-based diet. The reality is, as you continue to look at the data, carnivore diets are not as uh, don't appear to be showing the evidence of being as scary as many of us um, found. Bottom line is, I'm far less concerned about saturated fats. I'm far less concerned about uh, oils, uh, whether you get them from a plant base or animal base. Um, I'm far more concerned about eating uh, stuff that makes your blood sugar go up if your blood sugar is a major risk. If your blood sugar is spending significant time over 140 or 180, you remember what we, we saw earlier about your probability of going into extremists, uh, getting intubated, intensive care, and death. Um, just with this one infection, uh, the most recent infectious pandemic, COVID-19. It's all these things, uh, having blood sugars over 140 and 180 are also a very, very big deal. They are the real pandemic and it's been going on more and more and more of the past decade. But it's been more of a cardiovascular um, demonstration of the problem. So if you go back to this article and the script, they're recommending a ketogenic MCT uh, medium chain uh, uh, triglyceride rich, um, something like uh, lauric acid uh, followed by short term uh, intermittent fasting or a breakfast enriched with a, a ketogenic in, um, medium chain um, oil enriched with uh, LA or uh, lauric acid or caprylic acid and the uh, mono, uns mono unsaturated long chain fatty acids. Following breakfast supplement with 20 grams of a ketogenic MCT drink, should have been drink, pardon me, and keeping eight to 12 hour fasting, at least 20 gram ketogenic MCT drink without a meal at lunch. Um, so again, as you see, these guys are talking a lot about uh, uh, ketogenic diet, um, they're talking about, uh, with some of these, they're talking about um, a topic, another topic that came up with with the comments uh, this past 24 hours. Uh, actually, for this video, I think it was Vagabond Sojourner asked about um, BHB, beta-hydroxybutyrate. That's what's called an exogenous fatty acid. And... Um, the exogenous fatty acids, uh, they got a bad rap uh, early on. And uh, I was one of the folks that was very critical of them. And the reality is I was concerned. And, and you do still see this problem. People saying, well, you know what? I can eat a carb-filled diet but still get some uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate or other uh, ketones. Well, and those are going to fix my problem. Well, actually, there is evidence that that will help. Uh, there's clear uh, evidence that it will, that think exogenous uh, fatty acids are um, uh, bio uh, signals, biological signal uh, indicators. And so they can help uh, boost the metabolism towards more of a fat burning metabolism. But again, you get back to the basics. You can't uh, drink some beta-hydroxybutyrate and continue a very carb-driven diet and expect that to uh, to pull you out pull you out of your lifestyle problem. So, well, more tech issues, and uh, there we go. That's our uh, presentation for today. Let me. Um, Open up and go ahead and give us the water ball, if you would, um, Aspen or Gilbert. So, 
see if we can get through some of these questions. I will tell you, I have a, uh, a hard stop at, uh, gosh, let me see. I think this is like 15 minutes in 15 more minutes today. I've got, uh, we're, uh, we're down doing, uh, some work on the, uh, the Alabama project and I'm uh, going to be doing some work with the, the Papa activities. So <clears throat> John Tocho received my second Pfizer vaccine shot this weekend, felt a little bit tired, but was buoyed by the fact that I had my second shot. As we mentioned, uh, I got two doses of uh, mode RNA or Moderna and yeah, you know what? Very political item. Uh, the folks that are afraid of these are saying, you know, for the messenger RNA, you're just becoming an experimental human um, uh, spike protein factory. Yep, that's exactly what I was happy to be because the alternative is, I mean, all of us are going to get either exposed to this one way or another, either through vaccine or through the virus itself over the next, what, six to 18 months. I'd rather become a spike protein uh, factory than a uh, coronavirus factory. So, a mayor from Germany, good evening. Uh, so, um, we mentioned this earlier, Vagabond Sojourner was, you know, hey doc, what about exogenous uh, drinking beta hydroxybutyrate? and uh, Anyone had the J&J &J vaccine? I have not. Um, it's a good question. It's, I, let me just, uh, pardon me for jumping around, but that's the way the questions are, come in. So on the J&J &J vaccine, I've got a lot of people who are very much afraid of the, uh, m the messenger RNA vaccines, which are gonna be what, Pfizer and, um, and Moderna. The J&J um, &J vaccine is an old style technology uh, right now set up mostly for a single dose. It's just now getting out there. And that's what I've said to folks who are afraid of the, the mRNA vaccines. You know, why don't you, have you considered uh, the J and J? Now back to Vag Vagabond Sojourner's question. Yeah, there's clearly evidence, uh, despite what many of us, myself included, uh, were concerned about originally with uh, exogenous uh, ketones. Clearly there's evidence that they can help but it doesn't get away from the bigger issue and uh, the same thing that many of us have been concerned about day one. You can't out prescribe a lifestyle issue. You can't out stint a lifestyle issue. You can't out stress test a lifestyle issue. You can't out supplement a lifestyle issue and you can't out exogenous ketone your lifestyle issue as well. And uh, I gave a little um, link to a to a more academic or science article on this issue. Uh, Bart Robinson, good morning. Bambi Grage, good morning. Uh, John, amen to that. Uh, very relieved to have been vaccinated. Martha Reich, uh, Aunt, James's Aunt Martha. James is not going to be appearing today. Uh, he is, again, he's eyeball deep in working on the, uh, the uh, Medicare Advantage program in Alabama. And uh, my wife gets frustrated when she hears me say James is eyeball deep. He, well, he is, he's getting a lot of work done. It's a very, very big project. Good morning. Second Pfizer uh, shot yesterday, sore arm, no other symptoms at the moment. I saw a headline talking about how women tend to get a little bit more side effects from the immediate side effects from these vaccines than men. Didn't have time to take a look at it, but it's very interesting. Vicki Shi, well, one of my coworkers, and I work in a hospital, had two doses of Pfizer. Three weeks later, he was COVID positive and he had a handful of symptoms. Yes. The, there's significant evidence that it doesn't stop, uh, completely stop transmission. In fact, oh gosh, I don't even know how deep I want to get into all of every item, including this one is hotly contested. Um, um, my wife has said, well, Ford, you know, you can still transmit this virus. And 
my answer is, well, yes. Or my response is, yes, there's no question you can still transmit the virus. I had a friend who was infected two weeks after his uh, second dose. And guess what? He also works in a hospital. And at that point in time, they put him on quarantine for a couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> that process of putting folks in quarantine after when they become infected after a virus, two weeks after your second dose of vaccine, uh, that the necessity of putting those folks in uh, quarantine is become is being questioned uh, and evidence indicating that maybe not as important. Uh, those folks don't appear to be the ones that are really transmitting this virus. This virus, like many others, appears to be very dependent upon a super spreader event. People with it have had uh, the, the vaccines um, not likely to, to, to be super spreaders. Uh, but again, uh, caveat on that as well as anything else regarding uh, regarding this program. Even though I've had my own vaccine, second dose, three, four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago now, I still wear a mask. I still social distance. I still am doing what I can to, uh, to decrease exposure. Uh, Martha Wright, we have our CIMT tomorrow in Huntsville. Very good. Pray the weather isn't as bad as predicted. Yeah. Good luck on that. Um, and glad to hear you're getting the CIMT. Folks are starting to get out and get the CIMT. Uh, Bambi Grage uh, asked, was it Grage or Bambi Abel? I think it was Bambi. Bambi asked if in one of these, we'll, we'll mention it a little bit later. He's asking if we're going to start doing the, um, the um, CIMT events again. I, I I have to say, I don't know. We may end up, uh, James is talking about doing, uh, setting up one uh, with some folks down near Sarasota. Um, I don't know if, um, if David Mainz is going to be adding some of these to his, uh, to his presentations or not. David's not out traveling to present yet in a post-COVID Hi, doctor from Anonymous. Well, hello, Anonymous. Please, could you help me with a question? Well, you have to let me know what the question is. And that's that's what this is about, doing some Q&A. T-Bone. Hello, doc. Oh, you know, Joe, you keep changing your, your tag there, my friend. But good to hear from you. Anonymous, are there any specific supplements or herbs that could help remove glycosaminoglycans or mucopolysaccharides? That's not ringing any bells right now. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the term, but I don't think I'm going to be able to whip out an immediate reaction to that. Anonymous, L-O-L, -L, keto. Not sure what that means. Anonymous, I'd stay out of the rain, and the virus is allegedly had. Well, I'm not sure where you're going with all that. Anonymous. Uh, Mauricio Liscano, admission. Hyperglycemia as a predictor of mortality in patients hospitalized with COVID-19, regardless of sugar or of diabetes status. Data from the Spanish semi-COVID-19 registry. So thank you, Mauricio. Um, it sounds like you've got some similar data coming from uh, similar places in Spain. I'm guessing it's showing the same thing. Patrick Kitch, hey doc, what about some research that I saw that keto can damage your heart? <clears throat> Have you seen this? Um, no. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to start getting into trying to guessing about that. I, I have some immediate thoughts, but I'll leave those alone until I see the real, the real data, the real evidence. Ruth Fay, always better when I listen and learn from you. Continue the great work. We love you. Well, thank you, Ruth. I uh, greatly appreciate that. Bambi Grage, will there be any CIMT events scheduled soon? Uh, like I said, we're people are starting to wake up uh, <clears throat> post uh, COVID, <clears throat> or hopefully, and as uh, they do, we'll start getting some of those out there. 
<clears throat> Haru Glory, being in ketosis and lower insulin levels increase immune system. Well, Haru, uh, go back. I'm thinking maybe you missed the major part of the presentation today. And if you did, just uh, it'll be posted on, uh, on YouTube. And just go back and watch those first 10, 15 minutes. The answer is yes. Uh, Vagabond Sojourner, children are highly unlikely to die from COVID. Statistically zero. Well, it's pretty close. It's not exactly zero, but yeah. And old as well as obese people are the vast majority dying from it. Why? Well, older people and uh, obese people have major cardiovascular inflammation challenges already set up. And I mean, that's what the, the major part of the presentation was today. As you saw, IL-6, uh, uh, TN-alpha, uh, all, all these cytokines and this cytokine uh, spiral is what we see with cardiovascular disease. I mean, we don't see full-blown uh, cytokine storm in cardiovascular disease, but it's the cardiovascular inflammation, the triggering of these inflammatory processes that causes heart attack and stroke, which are also greatly, you don't see risk to uh, children of cardiovascular disease, just like you don't see it for COVID. You do see risk for old people and obese people and people with really high blood sugar for COVID, just like you see with cardiovascular disease. So vag vagabond, <clears throat> maybe I was too subtle. I've been too subtle in terms of drawing some of these analogies. I'm going to try to uh, zip. We've got tons of questions coming in now, and I've got minimal, uh, minimal opportunity and time. Uh, does fasting suppress the immune system? No, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, in, in fact, there's plenty of evidence that it improves it. Uh, Vicky Shi, so when we talk about keto, meat consumption is assumed. What about TMAO? So uh, meat, uh, uh, meat consumption may be assumed, but that's not an accurate assumption. You can go full-blown keto on a full-blown vegan diet. You just have to get your oils from uh, vegan sources. So we're not talking about uh, uh, that may be the assumption, but it's not an accurate one. TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. So that's a story. That's one of the final um, planks in the vegetarian or vegan platform. And the reality is, uh, as you dig deeper and deeper into that, TMAO is an issue if you've got kidney disease. If you don't, it isn't. Uh, go back and look at some. I've actually got several videos on that where I go back and look at the state of the art science on it. Thank you for the comment. Martha Reich, my NP says that a running glucose average of more than 100 is troublesome, may indicate diabetes. Do you indicate, do you agree with over 100? No, I mean, no. Uh, that's hard, especially as we age, to keep it below 100 all the time. Typical 20 year old, thin teenagers and 20 year olds, yes, they can and will do that naturally. But as we uh, age, we tend to get more and more insulin resistant. Um, the real goal for a, for a middle ager is to keep it over, under 120. And most of my diabetics can do that, at least on a clearly on running averages. And I'm going to move on. Chuck K. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Chuck. Thank you for uh, making us aware of your presence. Patrick, Patrick Kish. Hello from Denmark. Hello. And thank you Thank you for the great information. Thank you for letting us know that you're dialing in from Denmark. Vagabond Sojourner, since HOMA IR relies on glucose and insulin levels, if they go up, your HOMA IR raises. To have a good IR, your glucose needs to be 100, under 100 and insulin around uh, 0.5. What am I missing? The major thing that you're missing about, home, you're not missing you know, uh, much, but what you are missing is very, very important. Folks are really into HOMA IR. The problem with HOMA IR is it's simply a ratio, usually in a fasting state. I see people all the time 
who have a great HOMA IR, a great insulin and glucose ratio until you challenge it. And then when you challenge it, it goes bad, very bad. So you can take a snapshot and uh, the person looks like they're standing in front of a car and things are fine. But once you begin to fill out the motion in that movie, you see that the person's getting run over by the car. And that's exactly what happens with Homa IR. And, you know, pardon the, the, the violent imagery, but that's exactly what's going on in our bodies. Uh, damage, disability, and death due to unrecognized prediabetes. And Homa IR is a better way than most of the ways that are being managed, but it's clearly not the be all and end all that most Homa IR fans think it is. T-bone, Joe Riley, deaths caused by vaccination, zero. Well, there have been a couple of deaths and there does appear to be a couple of things, especially the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the clotting related problems. But I will say this, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Pardon me for being overly technical with you, uh, T-Bone, but you're right. There are not half a million COVID, I mean, uh, COVID vaccine deaths out there. There just are not. It's like, what are we missing here? I've got some family members who are very much afraid of the vaccine. And again, it's like, you rather have the virus. Well, I actually understand some of that because most of most of these people have not met and or seen somebody die or go into the ICU from this virus. Every time they hear about it and see about it, it's like a nothing event. So, you know, humans are like this. If we don't see it ourselves, we don't believe it. We're all doubting. We all tend to be doubting Thomas's. Steve Mitchum. Good morning, Dr. Brewer. Thank you for the great information. Thank you, Steve, for your uh, for the comment. And if you guys don't mind, uh, please hit that like button and share this because this will help the, the AI, the artificial intelligence within YouTube, recognize and understand that um, this information is, is important to humans, which it is. Does fasting suppress the immune system? Uh, as we've said before, uh, and if you go to the point to where you can get to that point, but no, you don't see that in the U.S. You see too much suppression of the immune system due to eating too much and too often. Patrick Kitchell, and hello from Copenhagen. Well, so we've got a couple of Scandinavians here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitchell. Cape Kale, hello from Nashville. Um, Aunt Martha, do you know Omar Hamada from Nashville? <laughs> I do. I do know Omar Hamada. Um, Robin Tomlinson, hello from the UK. Thanks for sharing where you're from. And Roxanne from Ontario. Uh, T Bone gave us a, a super chat. Thank you so much, Joe. We appreciate that. Uh, super chat. Um, Ask Ben if you could show how to, the folks how to do a super chat, what, what Joe did. I'd, there you go. So there's some instructions on how to do that. That helps us. I mean, we're uh, right, right now, uh, all of our activities are, are supported. As you see, we've got uh, Aspen. We've got uh, Gilbert, who's a great graphics designer. We've got Sam, who helps manage the tech side. All of that costs money, and all of that basically has been uh, supported by my seeing patients. Uh, we do get a little bit of uh, money from uh, paid uh, YouTubes, uh, but not a whole lot. It doesn't cover our costs. And so any little bit helps. Thank you so much again, Joe. Kurt Bryant, happy to be a new patient of yours. Thank you so much for sharing that. Looking forward to our remote visit at the end of April. I am too. Uh, thank you again, Kurt. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, John Tocho, yes, we're at 45. Thank you so much. And guys, I apologize for having to uh, cut before we've dealt with questions today. But as I mentioned in the beginning, um, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of neat things going on.
uh, helping people uh, prevent their disease in large populations. Um, I'm doing some work right now with several companies that are doing that. One of them is a group called Papa Health. Uh, they're look, working with seniors, helping seniors figure out how do I get a blood sugar? How do I get to see my doc? How can I make sure that, you know, my dentures broke and now I'm not able to eat as much? Helping them, helping seniors get where they need to be with their health. So again, thank you so much for your interest and um, we'll see you next week.